they come back as well. King Crab, well welcome to Dutch Harbor. We are getting some narration about snow crab out here on the deck now. We're down on deck three. Getting into World War II history now. Oh, they've got that banner that says, like, stay a certain distance away from our ship. I've seen that before. Oh, coming around the back, we've got a friend, don't we? Let's see what can be seen off this side. Ah, the port. I believe somewhere over in this area is where we're going to end up here at the port of Dutch or Dutch Harbor on the island of Unalaska near the town of Unalaska. D is otter spotting out here. Yeah, so the area where we're going to dock is about two and a half miles from town. They're not running any sort of shuttling service or anything like that today, but there is a hop-on hop-off you can buy last minute for about 60 bucks a person. We're starting to make our turn. She just said that we were welcomed by a whale 10 minutes ago at the back of the ship. Where, what, what the heck? We were in the room getting bundled up. Because Whoops. It's 49 degrees. 47 degrees. Yeah. Pretty chilly. Yeah. yeah. High of 49 today, but about 47 right now. But I've seen many sea otters already. So it seems to be abundant with animal activity. It's exciting. Now let's jump to the other side because they say we're getting some pretty good views of town right now. Now don't worry, the plan is to get a little closer. We're going to try to walk over there. So, But there is our first glimpses of the town. All right, one more peek out this side. I came back over here to try to see if I can get a, an idea of where we're going to dock. And of course, we saw a sealy sea lion friend in the water. Oh, he is popping up out there still. Ninja photo mode D. I mean, oh, there's very like, far away. But... Isn't that like a ton of them just sitting out there on that structure? Yeah, look at them kind of bopping around yeah. beside it, just having fun. Thanks, man. I'm a nature spotter. Good morning. Good morning. Officially from almost Dutch Harbor. Unalaska. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've heard two pronunciations. I guess the original native word was Unalaska, but it's pretty much been Americanized to Unalaska these days, which I thought was funny because I was like, did this town name themselves because they didn't want to be part of Alaska and they named no. it Unalaska? No. Apparently it means near the peninsula. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, there were zero excursions that we could see offered through the ship for today, which was interesting. Yeah. Um, it's not a port you go to very often, true. to be honest. Usually, just if you're going over to like Japan and things like that, they do have it as a port stop. But I've never seen it on an Alaska itinerary until mm. this cruise. Yeah, so pretty much what you do is you go explore the town. That is what there is to do, so that's what we're going to do. And I think we mentioned earlier they are doing a hop-on, hop-off service. Sometimes in the past, the town, I guess, has offered a free shuttle. That is not happening today. No. So we are going to hoof it over there and hoof it back and see how many steps we get in. We want to get steps in. Plus, you can like be one with nature and see all the surrounding. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. We've never been here. Yes. Let's explore. So first of all, lunch, and then we're going to hop off and explore. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Let's do it. Ooh, we have used the app to pre-order our lunch, so we'll just run up there and pick that up. Nice. I guess it lets me know when it's ready. Ooh, our order status has already changed to processing. Ooh, another fun fact before I forget. Dutch Harbor apparently observes a different time zone than everywhere else we are going in Alaska. So although our arrival time is noon ship time, they did not make us adjust to Dutch Harbor time, so it's going to be 11 o'clock local time, 11 a.m. Hmm. Boom! Just like that. So we got one high dive, I don't know which one is which at this point, one cannonball, a jackknife, which is the hot dog, and two orders of naked fries. The local time is one The gangway is on deck one. Aha, we found the end of the line here at the forward elevator lobby. I think the gangway is midship. So we'll wiggle our way back to the midship. 
We have made it. Now down the gangway we go. Oh, look at the photo ops tying into the whole fishing uh, that they do here. I'm assuming these are like, well, I would say tour vehicles, but that's not a thing. So this must be waiting for vans to come pick you up to drive you downtown. That might be the hop on, hop off. We're going to do some learning today, I tell you. And we've also got the mystery of the time zone to solve because they came over the speakers and confirmed and said, yes, Dutch Harbor is one hour earlier than ship time. Please be aware. And then they came back over and said, oh, no, that was a mistake. Dutch Harbor is the same as ship time. But Google says it's different. So. Yeah. Can't always trust the Google, though. That's true. Vehicle rental. Hey. We are just going to hit the street. They said it's about a mile until you come to some kind of like interpretation center and then another eh, one and a quarter past that to town. Yeah, those might be the hop on hop offs for today, actually. Uh, or taxis. That one's marked a taxi. And passing the airport now. They've got the uh, things up here that look like train gates flashing. I don't know if that's because a plane just took off. Interesting. Well, definitely not railroad tracks. Well, hey. Oh, uh, yeah, now the traffic can go. I guess they stop traffic when a plane is taking off. There's our ship way over there. <laughs> Just wind our way around this way. Well, there's our first probably major point of interest, which is a visitor center of the Aleutian World War II National Historic Areas Visitor Center. So this is where you start to celebrate. Yay, we've made it. There's a fire station. There's all sorts of stuff around. Not quite. So this marks about one mile traveled from the ship. We still got a mile and a quarter to go to get to like town proper, I guess. <laughs> I see vehicle rentals right over there. So this is Airport Beach Road. Y'all, we have both shed some layers. Who knew 48-ish degrees would be so pleasant? Because it's sunny out here. Another fun fact, apparently this island has zero bears. Zero. <laughs> so no need to worry about walking around. Maybe moose, I don't know. But nothing to worry about. We'll see. Ooh, we're going off-roading now. This is where you just step to the side, try not to trip her in a little hole like I just did, and come check out some views. We were seeing orange sea stars in the water as we walked over here. I didn't document any of that. Well, they were hard to see on camera, I'm sure. Now we have all these views. Mm -hmm. Here's where they keep their teeth. So I think we are about halfway there at this point. We still have another little chunk of pre-town to go through. Oh, we've come across what appears to be possibly some sort of a bunker type device. I know that hill in the background, at least I think that's Bunker Hill, and I can see the structure up on top of that. There's also some stuff down there at the beach. I know that's very specific. Some stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure what all that structure down there is. And if we look over in this direction, you can kind of see there to the left, I think, are some bunker remnants up at the top of Bunker Hill. Yeah, yeah there is an entrance into this bunker. See some remnants of some folks hanging out in there, it looks like. Party! Party bunker. It's a party bunker. There is Dutch Grind, which appears to be a drive through coffee spot. Then you look over and you see the Safeway grocery store. You're like, surely we're almost there by now. <laughs> nope. Think again. Holy trap. Look at those crab pot traps. All right, we're going to get D to go stand by one for scale because, you know, you are, in fact, six feet tall. Okay, I'd say that's about six to six and a half feet tall. That's pretty big. What the heck could you catch in there? You could catch D's in there. I don't know what kind of bait you'd have to use. Just some, like, shrimp or something. I don't know. Maybe an apple dessert. <laughs> yeah, lots more bunkers and structures out here. That's cool. Well, that's a fun little art piece here outside what I believe is a saloon. I thought it was a crab pot at first, but it's just a big mechanical looking art piece. More machinery and stuff to see along the edge of the beach. They even have like little benches so you can take a rest break. Oh, I hear a bird. 
or something. You could just sit there and they left candy on the bench. Don't trust that. Y'all don't take candy from benches. If I've learned one thing in my life, don't take candy from benches. A distant eagle spotting. We're just going to continue following this road as it loop de loos through here. We've got a giant eagle on a light post right here. Okay, that's what they said this place was known for eagles. If we can lighten it up a little better so we can see him up there. Hey, friend. Well, there's a nice angle. We walked around and got him against the sky now instead of the rocks. Now we just need a giant American flag waving in the background. America! Man, I see more flying in the distance, I think. Anyway, what we should do today is count the number of times that uh, we hear eagles singing Sweet Caroline. Zero. Okay, zero so far. <laughs> Look at this lamppost up here has another one. <laughs> another one. Sheesh. Now that's right, we don't need them singing Sweet Caroline. We need them singing eagle songs. So they could be like, welcome to the hotel in Alaska. I've jumped down here to a little protected sidewalk just off the main road now. Only 16 miles left to walk. <laughs> Y'all, I've been tricking into exercise today. Mm -mm -mm. That's all right. Today we might make a new record goal for steps. We're already at 9,500. Yeah, we're about to hit our 10,000. I think the town is coming into sight up here. We gotta go across a little bridge. We'll see. Just cast your eyes to the skies. <laughs> Good gracious. I think this is the top of Bunker Hill, finally, that we're over here near. Apparently that's where the eagles live. That's what they sound like. Little chittering eagles. Fun fact, a lot of people think eagles sound like they do in Hollywood movies, which is usually like the sound of a hawk or something like that. When in reality, you can know you're hearing an eagle when they say, You can't hide these lion eyes. Eagles? Yeah, okay. Life in the fast lane, that, that kind of thing. What else can we learn about? Expedition Island, Sub Base 151. Yeah, we'll have to see how much time we end up with to explore town because we've taken a fairly leisurely stroll over here. By the time we get to town, we have a, a five and a half hour port day today and I feel like it's going to have taken a good couple of hours for us to stroll to town. We'll keep an eye on the time. Almost two. Uh-oh. We're here till 5.30. Very short day. Okay. So we're about an hour and a half into our day so far. Yeah, so you look over there and you go, I wonder if those are eagles and they go, Desperado! And you're like, yep. Yep, yep. Them's there's eagles. Well, we reached a bridge now. The signage says Captain's Bay. Should be the right way. Y'all, we found the incline portion now. Ooh, baby. It's not that bad yet, but it is definitely a hill. Well, now we have a 9% grade back down, but this should be the final stretch. And then you do it all in reverse. Then you do it all in reverse. <laughs> well, we've made it to City Hall. There's some eagles and stuff. Oh, you see the, oh yeah. The cathedral right there by City Hall. Guys, we saw it. Okay, time to head back to the ship. We have time. All right, so now down this hill, across the bridge, which I think is about 5th Street, and we should be good. So there is the 5th Street vehicle bridge down there. But fun fact that I didn't even realize, there's a pedestrian bridge at 3rd Street. Let's totally take that. We have done it. Isalux Bridge, meaning safe crossing. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, well, I'm so proud we made it to Unalaska. This is like the greatest accomplishment of my day. Fun fact, because I'm full of those today. We're going to have to check the old step tracker because I think it was like four miles over here. <laughs> I don't know where two and a quarter came from, but you got your step tracker working. Yours needs a connectivity. Yeah. Mine doesn't. Yeah, mine does not seem to require any signal. So yeah, we have done, or me personally, it says 11.8 thousand steps, 4.9 miles. Something ain't mathing up in that math, because I know Stone said it was two and a quarter miles over here. What? Now I have to uncover the other great mystery. What time is it right now in Unalaska? <laughs> and does it match the ship time? 2.14 So 2.14 ship time. Oh, we could just ask, knock on a door. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to go look for a clock tower or something. <laughs> Broadway Avenue. Yes, as soon as we got to the top of that hill, we put our layers back on. Oh, no. We found the cool breeze, which was very nice. Let's take a left on Broadway. Not yet. What? 
Guys, wait till the cars pass and then take a left on Broadway. So this is the Great White Way. Where is Times Square? Oh, wrong Broadway? Oops. Well, we are seeing the number one highlight in all of Unalaska, at least in my book. There's lots of museums and stuff like that, to be fair, but we figured we would make our first stop here at the cathedral. Here among the dandelions, next to number 243, Broadway. Oh, we walked all the way. Oh yeah, there's an eagle <laughs> nest over there, that's awesome. I see the nest right there though, yeah. Oh man, okay, I'll look at that after we're done looking at the cathedral. Man, we just ran into folks over there. We had seen the eagle nest, but they were just making sure that we had seen it. You'll be able to get a close-up shot of that. Yeah, that's about as close as I can get right there in the middle of the screen, but Photos by D can take care of that one for us too. She got that photo time zoom. Well, now we can focus our attention on this structure. We're gonna see which side is the front. I think it's actually where that gentleman is walking out there. Let's see what kind of angles we can get. I don't know if this is actually open to go in, so let's go find that out. Yes, there we have the front and the door does appear to be open. A little gloomy looking on this camera. Well, I was thinking maybe we could see the ship from out here. I'm actually not even sure. We wound around and around so much, I don't even know where the ship is. We'll go find it later, I'm sure. I like a little cemetery over there to the left. What's that little version of the church? Oh, we gotta go read about that. I do not know what's behind this cute little church, but that is amazing. Is that a little plaque that says, Cardinals appear when angels are near? And then we've got a little thing over here with the footprints verse on top. Huh. Y'all, there is an eagle up on top of the church now. Just having a good time. Just like I'm chilling up here. Just chilling on top of the church. So this is the church yard over on the side. I guess we'll see if we can take a peek inside came all this way, yeah? Might as well. Well, it's a little dark. Church of the Holy Ascension. Oh, National Historic God. Landmark. Let us venture inside. What's going on in here? I'll oh. take my hat off. <laughs> oh, we got a little donation box up there. Yeah, thanks. Let's peek all this artwork. Well, there's somebody in here that's telling us about the place and how they operate. Let's wander this way. Look at all this intricate detail. Such detail. Well, let's come check out this one last room. What's happening in here? Some nice little benches. Now we're kind of hearing some of the history and stuff that they're telling in there. All right, let us continue the wander. Back out onto the wild streets of Broadway we go. We're heading back the way we came now. I think if we pass the 3rd Street, 5th Street area, kind of go to the other end of town. Well, we decided to ask someone who lives here what time it is, and she confirmed that we do... Oh, look at a totem pole. <gasps> Leave y'all in suspense. So I can look at a totem pole. Local time does match our ship time, which is weird. So Google was the liar of the day. At least right now interesting know daylight true all that, but. thanks google there's a community center we passed an elementary school an aquatic center there's the christian fellowship church making our way downtown awesome. walking fast faces pass and i'm homebound well i'm not sure what this building is it's next to the high school but they got a cool canoe is what you call it a canoe all right, we've reached Broadway and King. We're gonna sort of hang a left here. I see the Methodist Church up there. There was some unknown animal running across the parking lot. It kind of looked like a fox. Could have been a dog. Like an anteater to me. Or an anteater. 
Ooh, we have come out to Bayview now and we have found the breeze. That is refreshing. Y'all, you see that teeny little speck over there in the fog? That is our ship. And apparently it's about four, four and a half Thousand. miles away. So we're gonna end up going back over there in a little while, but we'll see what else we can see here in town. Gosh, look at this creepy mist coming in. But if we stroll down Bayview, we should have, I think it's the city cemetery and the Russian cemetery. Who shoe are you? Oi! It's a nice shoe. It is. Well, welcome to Memorial Park. Well, let's do some park looking. We got benches for resting, baggies for cleaning up. You need the bench by the time you get here. You do. <laughs> so there's some memorials, all kinds of flags. There's the cemeteries up on the hill. Look at this tree. It's like a bonsai tree. Well, its shape reminds me of a bonsai, but I don't know if it really is. I'm gonna say probably not. Erected in memory, uh, lives lost during the air raid at Dutch Harbor, 1942. Yeah, I know they've got some World War II museums and things like that that you can visit, but I mean, just looking at this out here in the open air, all the nature, all these monuments, There's another bunker looking structure dedicated to the men who served, fought, and died with the 206th Coast Artillery Anti-Aircraft Regiment, 41 to 44, World War II. Mm. No, I don't want to step on the grass, so we'll just read this plaque from the side. Now it says this tree grows in the memory of servicemen and women who planted trees in Unalaska during their years of service here, but something must have happened to the tree. Because we have sign, but I don't see tree. May peace prevail on earth. Now looking across the way, our ship is completely gone now. The fog has eaten it. I tell you, it's like one of them bad Stephen King movies. I don't know now. Oh, here's the entrance to this little bunker memorial over on this side. Well, here's a giant monument for the Bering Sea Patrol. The U.S. Coast Guard. Just like my granddaddy. Oh, this is cool. Okay, SS Northwestern, launched in 1889, carried passengers and freight for the Alaska Steamship Company. It's got a whole history of this, and there's a gigantic propeller out here. Wow. Well, here is a peek back at the whole complex from the view of, like, the propeller area. Oh, we can see all the way down to the cathedral where we came from. And, of course, a ship that used to exist out there in the mist. <laughs> We're coming back to you, ship. All right, well, we've had a minor dose of World War II history. We've had some Russian, uh, <laughs> some church history. Yeah. Uh, let's start the wander back. Okay. Well, we found a little shortcut trail that'll connect us back up over to Fifth Street. We can exit over that uh, pedestrian, no, the vehicle bridge. Pedestrian bridge was Third Street. Y'all, smart people, is this, um, salmon catching stuff. I'm trying to remember from our time going up like uh, in Haines yeah. toward the river and stuff. We saw things that looked like this and it had to do with salmon production. Question mark? Looks the same. Yeah, I think I saw a sign on this building that said something about a salmon hatchery. So, I mean, that would make sense. Well, there's a little visitor center up there in that direction. This is Fifth Street. So this will be our exit point. And now to do it all in reverse. Now there is one more interesting museum, which we're not going to walk directly by it. It's kind of on a back road, but I want to kind of point out where it is as we go by. Well, there is the Unalaska Post Office if you need anything mailed from the 99685. <laughs> well, we crested the top of that hill, off come the layers again. I guess it's just the hill protecting us from that uh, chilly <laughs> breeze coming off the water. That's why we say travelers to Alaska are like onions. We have layers. Peel them off. Mmm, <laughs> parfait. Ooh, you better study harder. Mm-mm-mm. 9% grade. That's flunking right there. <laughs> Back across Captain's Bay. I got a peaceful, eagerly feeling. You're not too close. Oh, bye, friend. He didn't like oh, my song. Oh, get you some lunch. Yeah. 
back to his home up on the lamp post. Yeah, this is a different friend. Y'all, I'm out of eagle songs. I know I know more, but in, insert your own eagle song here. Fly like an eagle. Okay, no, that's Steve Miller and or Seal. I'm looking for like... <laughs> <sighs> Look at him shaking that thing. So yeah, if we keep our eyes on the grass, there's like at least three just sitting in the grass. I've never seen so many. All right, so two intersections I want to point out. One is Gilman Road. There is a loop road that you can also take, which will get you to town. It looks a little longer on the map, but if you follow this loop road around, there is an Aleutian Museum back there that looked pretty cool. We're going to continue on Airport Beach, taking pictures of eagles and strolling amongst the cool, creepy mist look at all this cool fog that has crept in man some of it actually looks like mountains out there that's awesome well we're having a semi i wouldn't really say elevated paced stroll back from the or to the ship but stopping enough to take in the views revel in the sounds of the passing vehicles d said this kind of looks like the shire or something does it look like hobbits could live there Maybe so. Oh, looks like a juvenile maybe up on this pole. Save tonight. Oh, that's that's Eagle Eye Cherry, not not the Eagles. Alaska rocks. Up ahead in the distance, I saw a shimmering ship. Man, she looks so small from over here. <laughs> Here is the other intersection I wanted to point out. I believe this is called Salmon Way. I don't see a sign, but this is the other end of the loop. This is the end that is closer to the ship. And the first one I showed is the end that's closer to town. But you could walk that and go the same place we went today with the added bonus of seeing the Aleutian Museum. Back past the Safeway. There's the airport again and the fire station. Of course, that's where you will find this visitor center. We'll get a little bit more of a standing still shot now. Don't think we quite have time to go in there and fully enjoy it today. Our goal is getting closer and closer. We just have to kind of come down here, do a U-turn, and then we can head back over to the ship. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> home sweet home. Deck seven, Rotterdam deck. Oh, hey. Hallelujah. There it is, the post adventure update. So just north of 10 miles. Woo! <laughs> to you to advise you of a change to our planned itinerary. 
On Thursday, June 20th, we were scheduled to conduct scenic cruising around Little Diomede Island, which is a small island located in the Bering Strait between Alaska and Russia. But we just received a request from the indigenous community to alter our route to, the, to avoid disruption uh, to the local wildlife. Now, our highest priorities are always safety and security of our guests, our crew, and the destinations we visit. But we're also committed to operate responsibly everywhere we sail, both in marine environments and in the communities that welcome us during our travels. As such, we'll be adjusting our course to avoid Little Diomede Island. This alteration will not affect our passage into the Arctic Circle during the summer solstice. I thank you for your attention, and as always, on the Western, we look forward to continuing this legendary voyage with you, and remain, as always, at your service. Good, Good evening. evening. It is time for food, and we are ready for it. Yeah. We got back to the ship with about 40-ish minutes to spare, which we usually like to have 30, so that was right at our tolerance for back on boardness. Most of it was walking mm -hmm. to and from the town center area. Yeah, so. the bulk of our day. Yeah. But how was your day? It was wondering. really scenic and beautiful, and I've got plenty of steps in, and the temperature changed drastically, so the layers mm -hmm. are important, but the history was amazing to witness and be there in person and, and see all of that, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was It's a cute little town, and you don't go there very often, so no. there's not like a ton to do, but um, you can definitely get your steps in. Mm -hmm. Did you see any eagles or anything? <laughs> oh my gosh, I apologize in advance about how many eagle pictures there probably will be in photos by Dee. Uh, but there were so many eagles, the most I've ever seen in any port in Alaska, so that was true. awesome. Yeah, so now we just got the notification. I was in the bathroom, so I recorded the bathroom ceiling uh, that we are not going to be doing scenic cruising by Little Diomede Island as we thought we were, but we are still on course to be above the Arctic Circle for the summer solstice. So. It's understandable. The locals, you know, obviously there's a reason that they don't want the cruise ship around there, and we'll heed that advice. So, yeah. True. Well, now I'm going to heed my belly, and we are going to go to the MDR, I think, and see if yes. we can get into dinner. Please. Let's go. All right. Some tunes just kicked up. Casino is quiet because we are just getting ready to sail away. Billboard on board is quiet because hey, nothing happening right now. <laughs> it's dining room time. Quiet back here too. done with dinner let's jump down to deck two. Oh, very gracefully our feet still haven't recovered well we've just started sailing away we're hoping to find some seats here in the pinnacle bar region why have we come to pinnacle bar you may ask well they have aperitif martinis on special this happens just about every night so we figured you know what let's come check it out well, we asked how it worked, and they said basically you, you can order any of the special martinis over here on the Pinnacle Bar menu, and they will be $7. And they also have things like chocolate martinis. D has gone with a classic Cosmo, and I got the Paper Plane, which of course is a bourbon. Y'all, yeah, update. Apparently there was a misunderstanding. These are full price $12 martinis, so we still have not cracked the code of how the $7 martini works. I'm glad I told you to uh, check. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see if we can crack. We'll, we'll learn. We'll figure it out. Well, we are still no closer to cracking the code, but more on that later. He has gotten a Yuzu Margarita Martini, and I got another paper plane because they are delightful. We have come back to the cabin to find our chocolates, our paper for tomorrow, which is a sea day, and of course our letter that we are not going 
seen it cruising around Little Diomede. Good, Good night. night. Yo, we are doing a <laughs> sit down update tonight. Give them doggies a rest. <laughs> Woo. Ready for bed. Now, the first update is not really an update. We were really trying to figure out how the martini special at the Pinnacle Bar worked. Uh. We are no smarter than when we went in there. Um, the Because we thought uh, when we first spoke to the gentleman, he was like, okay, cool, order any martini, you're good to go. We did. They was $12. So we said, uh-oh, we made a mistake. And so we asked him for the second round, is there a special menu? Well, we did ask him, to be fair, the first time we I did. said, we're a little bit early for the 7 o'clock, $7 martinis. And he was like, oh, no, no, go ahead and order. We can do that now. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why we thought we were getting $7, because then he explained to us about the regular martinis, and that's how it worked. But yeah. uh, So for the second round, we're like, hey, is there a special? Because it said aperitif martinis. I don't know what that means. I mean, Maybe I looked it up. Um and he said, you know, he would check with his bartender. And so he disappeared. He was gone a long time. Forever. Came back out, kind of smiled at us, talked to somebody else, boom, disappeared in the back again. Um, I thought we scared him away. But he said he's talked to the bartender, and he talked to the bar manager, I believe. He said nobody had any idea what the heck a $7 martini was and why it was in the app. He said it seems like an error. Now, granted, it's been in there every single day. Every day. It's been in the paper every, every single day. day. This is day 10, and apparently we're the first people. I don't know that that's correct, but, like, that was nuts. No one else has come in there asking why is there a $7 martini special? I think everybody has have it all, which, you know, right now so. we, we don't have that because we don't need that many drinks. So we just like a drink here and there. Um, but yeah, that was really confusing. And I'm not blaming him. It's not his no. fault. But somebody needs to know what's happening. So after all that confusion, we did decide to go to guest services and let yeah. them know that maybe that shouldn't be in the paper Take or the app, the app if nobody seems to know what's happening with yeah. it because we want to inform you guys about stuff but we can inform you what's correct if they don't know what's correct that's true yeah he ended up having <laughs> to ring us up for two glasses of wine he just kept poking yeah. things in the computer until he found something that was seven dollars and then made a special note that he just gave us full price martinis for seven dollars but he came over and he was like okay <laughs> we can do this for you like you like it was, it was like the mafia <laughs> it was he was being all secretive and quiet about it it was, was a like, very strange experience <laughs> We're like, okay. So we only had one round of discounted yeah, yeah. martinis and we left. I didn't want to take no. advantage of the discounted martinis. I'm just curious if they'll figure it out now that we've mentioned it. Because I think feedback is good if something needs to be addressed. That's true. And we cannot have been the only people who have asked about this. It's in the paper already for tomorrow, so whoops. We may have to go back in there and see if they've learned it by the end of the cruise or something. I'm just but. curious. And whatever it's supposed to be is all I wanted to know. But yeah. I didn't know. So I know, because I looked up an aperitif martini. It looked like it could be like champagne and apple roll or something and i'm Love like that'd that. be right up your alley yeah. so it's all you know. good it's just it was an interesting comical experience yeah so <laughs> to if, say you, the least. if you know what an aperitif martini is please enlighten me so yeah y'all let's talk about dinner <laughs> dig it dig it you started off with some shrimp it's called a tangerine shrimp and it had like a sweet potato puree i wasn't sure in the first bite if all the flavors went together but by the end of it it was very good together um yeah, I haven't had it before, but it was it was cooked really well and flavors blended nicely. Wow. I got basically I thought of it as an, as an antipasto plate. It had what's the one called prosciutto. prosciutto. It had some salami, I think. There was a little blob of mozzarella on there, a breadstick. All the elements, I just ate them individually and they were all delicious. I didn't know if I was supposed to blend them. I dipped some of them in the sauces, which were like balsamic-y. I always have a good time with like a little plate like that. There is your watermelon and feta. This was good, and the thing I really enjoyed the most about it is that I used seedless watermelon. I've had this on a lot of other cruise ships where there's seeds in it, and it kind of distracts from the overall pleasant experience. Mm. But it was very refreshing, and the feta was nice and, like, salty. It was lovely. I can seed that. Uh -huh. I seed what you mean. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I got a salad, and you know the main reason I got a salad is because it had goat cheese in it. It would have been better with blue cheese, but no, it was lovely. It had <laughs> beets, goat cheese, oranges, lettuces, not set for a I didn't find any frisé in there. To me, this, I believe it was romaine and radicchio, but I'm not mad at it. The dressing was delightfully tangy. I did not need that much of it. <laughs> Good salad. There is your, what was that? Um, it was like, it was like pork parmesan. Okay. Like with spaghetti, like chicken parmesan, but with pork cutlet. Mm. Um, it was really tasty, very comforting, which is what I needed after being outside in the cold all day. Mm, so ugh. spaghetti, tomato sauce, like a pork cut cutlet that's breaded and fried, and then like some cheese with zucchini. It was yummy. Wow. 
I doubled it up. Now, I got the cod because our table neighbors had recommended the cod. Mm -hmm. It was delicious. It had like a little polenta stuff going on in the bottom. It's flaky, fall aparty, super nice, mild white fish. Had a nice little crust on it, I guess, from being panned, whatever they did to it. I enjoyed that one overall. I also got the quinoa meatballs, which of course was like a veggie option. Mm. They tasted like quinoa. I make quinoa at home a lot. Okay. It tasted just like quinoa. Um, but it had black beans. Uh, there were mushrooms. There was spinach in there. Nice. Uh, rice underneath. I think it was pine nuts on top, actually. So good flavors overall. That was a solid veggie dish. Gosh, there we go. Your dessert, banana something? Banana streusel cake, which Ooh. to me tasted like a really good banana bread, like cut into I don't know, like a bar form, basically, with okay. chocolate chips in it. It was delicious. It was very, very hearty. <laughs> But it was really good. Oh, you yeah. had some too. You gave me a little bite because it was too hearty for you. It was very hearty. You filled up. Uh, and I got the cheese plate mostly because it had blue on it. Actually, it had pepper jack tonight. That's the sneaky one over to the left that was kind of covered up. Uh, goat cheese, blue cheese. I don't even remember what the other one was, but it was probably Swissy or provolone. Yum, yum. I love that cheese plate. Mm. Food was much appreciated. <laughs> Can't find my pocket <laughs> help. There it is. That's it, y'all. Yeah. So we are retiring. I'm going to watch a movie <laughs> yes. and get in our comfortable pajamas and just lay down. <laughs> yep. Time for foot rest. Yeah. Um, some sea days coming up. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the next actual video will be, but we'll see. See you then. Come on. <laughs> Bye.